Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the NZXT C1000 Gold. I say Z because I'm British, and this is a setup video to talk you through the installation of this power supply unit. Now, it's a modular power supply, which means you only need to plug in the cables that you're going to be using. So keep that in mind as we go through the setup process. But it does have a lot of cables included in the box that may look intimidating when you first take things out. And it also will vary ever so slightly depending on what you're installing. So I'm going to try and show you as much as possible to make it really straightforward for you. It's also worth noting before you purchase that it's worth checking to see whether you even need a thousand watts or whether less is required or more is required. There's a tool that you can use to test the wattage requirements of your system by inputting all the different things. And I'll link that in the description because you don't want a PSU that's not powerful enough to power your system and you also don't want one that's super powerful and unnecessarily so if you've got a lower budget system this should be good enough for most systems especially if you're using a high-end graphics card like a 4000 series from nvidia for example which is very power intensive and if that's the case then stick with me because i'm going to show you all the different things to do to set it up to run with all the things that you'd want to now in the box you always get the power supply itself that you've seen a number of different cables included in two separate bags and the mains power adapter which will vary from region to region obviously with a classic three-prong british one which is grounding for safety and then a pack of four screws to mount it to the case here you can see the final thing with all the cables laid out nicely and i'm going to talk you through each of them now starting with the 24 pin motherboard power supply cable this is the most important and it's also very important that go through this process that you install these cables properly because they have clips on them that will sit both on the motherboard or the device you're installing on and on the psu and you can see them on the top of the cables here so we're installing this in the top left where it's marked motherboard 24 pin and it's split into two parts for this connection so you need to make sure that they're both pushed in and click into place both here and on the motherboard because you need to keep pushing until you feel that click and make sure they're properly seated. If the connection is loose, then your machine will not power on. And this is the most important cable for that. I'm also going to show you these installation processes with the motherboard outside the case, just to make it easier to see. Don't install the cables like this now. Obviously, you want to do it once you've fully installed everything else, but this is just for ease of use. So connect up the 24 pin and then we're on to the CPU connections. You can see there's CPU and PCIe markings on the right hand side here. Some motherboards require two or even three eight pin power supply cables for the CPU. You might not, it really varies from motherboard to motherboard, but in this case I'm using NZXT N7Z690 motherboard, which requires two CPU connectors. So I'm plugging those in here, one's an 8-pin and one's a 4-pin, you can see it in the top left here. So we're going to run those through the back of the case and I'll show you the process for that later on and then connect them up up here now the interesting thing about this is that these cables are actually splittable so the second one that i plugged in you can actually break it apart so it can be used as a four by four connector which essentially means that i can plug in that second one so this gives maximum power to the motherboard so if you want to do any overclocking or anything like that it will give you the cpu power that you need for it and the position of these may vary i have seen on some other motherboards for example that this connector ends up at the bottom of the motherboard so it will vary in position to position but you might find motherboard markings and things in the manual that recommend where these cables need installing next one i'm demonstrating is the pcie connections this is for your graphics card you'll see that these cables come with a sort of effect on the end where it split into two parts so that you can actually connect up multiple connectors. Graphics cards will vary with the number of connectors you need to use, but what I'm going to show you is for the 3060 graphics card. And so you can see that, we're, again, we're plugging in the end with the PCIe markings into the GPU, and the other end goes into the power supply unit. So this end, you can see, is also split. So it's a 6 by 2, which adds to a total of 8, and then it's chained up so that you can connect up two in this case we only need one of those connectors with this 3060 because it's not terribly power hungry but you might need two or three where possible use separate cables for each 
but you need to pinch those connectors together and then push them in there to clip them in. Some graphics cards you might find that you have one 8-pin connector and then one 6, which is why they're split like that. The next one is the SATA power connector. You can see that this plugs in with the peripheral and SATA in the bottom left. Now, the SATA connector is a flat connector, which is daisy-chained on that cable, so this fun is multiple connections on a single cable. Plug one end into the power supply unit, and then the other one's split here. You can see several different connectors here. These are used things like hard drives, SSDs, so you can see a demo with an SSD here, and with fan controllers and other devices too. They clip in, but you can connect up multiples. So for demo purposes, here's a Lee & Lee AL120 control box. That requires SATA power. You may find other things like Corsair power, fan power controllers, for example, Commander Pro, Commander Core, all those sorts of things often require this sort of connection as well. And you can connect up multiple devices with one cable. It's worth noting, I have unplugged a lot of the cables while going through this process, but you will want to install these beforehand. Now this is a Molex connector. This is very rarely used, so you might not need to plug this in in your PC. They are often used historically for things like CD and DVD drives, and more recently they're used for other things like pump reservoir combos that I'll show you in a second, but it's peripheral connection. So like the SATA, it plugs in the bottom left on that market on one end, and then you have this daisy chain connection on the other end, so you can plug in multiple things if you need to. So here's and a reservoir from a previous system that I use. This is for a full liquid loop cooling system. Again, you might not need it, so don't plug it in if you don't need it. There's no need to plug in extra cables unnecessarily just because they're included in the box. You'll just be making a mess for yourself and also restricting airflow potentially in your case. So in this case, we're going to be mounting the power supply unit in the bottom of the case. The fan faces down towards the bottom, so you need to face it wherever the venting is. So you can see that on the bottom of this case, there's some grill on the bottom there, which basically where the air is going to get pulled in from underneath the case, sucked through the power supply unit, and then hot air blown out the rear, so obviously it can keep cool. You'll notice there's a button on this for zero RPM mode as well that you can turn on. Now you'll notice that I've installed all the possible cables that I'm going to need in this build already. And that makes life a lot easier than trying to install them after you've installed the power supply unit. Because otherwise you've got to force your hand into this area, work out where things are and then try and connect it up. It becomes a pain. This power supply then screws into the case in four different points in the various corners. You'll have to work out where it lines up with the notches on your case. And this will vary from case to case. This is the NZXT H7 Flow. But other cases, the screws might go in different places and on different size peer shoes will have the holes in different places too. But you can see the full installation with all four of them set up there. Then you just need to work out where you're going to be running those cables. So in this case, the 24 pin obviously goes through the channeling on the left here. It's a fat cable and it's dip difficult to manipulate. You may well find that it's quite tough, especially in a case like this, where you have that sort of cable hiding tray in the middle of the case. I found it was quite difficult to negotiate around that and then into the motherboard because you've got to sort of force it around a corner. But where possible, it's worthwhile tying these down. I would, however, recommend not cable tying with plastic cable ties until you've finished and made sure that everything's plugged in correctly. Because one thing you don't want to have to do is to take all those off to make sure cables are connected and run things in different directions. It just becomes a nightmare. So it's worth just doing all this with Velcro ties to begin with and then eventually getting to the full cable tidying at the end. So now everything's installed. And by the way, if you want to see the full installation for this case, check out the video linked in the description where I went into the full guide for it. But we've mounted the motherboard and now I'm installing the cables. And you can see that I'm going for the 24 pin again on the right hand side. It's quite difficult to manipulate its way through that sort of tray on the right. And you also do need to make sure that the clip's the right way around. So obviously there's the clip on top, but that needs to be on the right hand side of it. So you have to sort of flip it around, make sure it's going in the right way, and then push in and seated properly until you hear that click. Obviously gently, but carefully connected. If you don't get this plugged in properly, then the system won't power on. So it's an important part of it. You'll notice in the top left, I've already plugged in those CPU power connectors that I showed you earlier on as well. And that's where I ran them through the back, trying to make things as neat as possible. The fan controllers will be plugged in at the rear, so there's not too much mess there. And obviously, if you've got SSDs and hard disk drives, those two will be connected up probably at the rear, because most cases, that's where those sorts of things are installed. Fairly straightforward for the most part, as you can see. Now I'm installing the graphics card. 
And I've run the cables, the PCIe cables for this from the bottom of where the PSU is out of a small hole down there that's there. You, it's going to vary from case to case what you're doing and how many cables you need to run to the front. It can be a little bit messy because obviously it has that sort of split on the end of it, which you've got two lots of eight pins. And on this, I only need one, so it's unfortunate because it means that you have a little bit of mess with the extra cable sort of being there by necessity. But the important thing to do is to make sure you pinch those cables together carefully because this is obviously an eight pin connection, but it's six by two, so it's split potentially if you need that six connection instead. You're just pushing that in gently and again, make sure it's clipped into place and then it's completed. Now, obviously, this, at this point, you can use plastic cable ties if you want to to tidy things up a bit. But in this case, it's actually not really necessary because the channeling and the Velcro ties ends up looking pretty sweet. And I'm pretty happy with the end design. Hopefully you found this video useful. Check out the links in the description to the other videos that might be relevant. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, you absolute legend. You've made it right to the end. And so you must have enjoyed it. Hit that thumbs up and give me a subscribe if you haven't already. Drop me a comment if you've got any questions. And check out these videos that I've linked over here. Because you might find them really useful or interesting or relevant. Have a great life.